Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for TES exam. We have been solving math problems out of this book, book here, the official study manual for TES 2020 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to do this. Uh, you're, going to, you're going to need it. We, we began this series yesterday. Today is only our day number two. And yesterday, I introduced this book to you. And on the blackboard, as you can clearly see, you'll find the ISBN number of which, and the title, so forth. I'm not going to go over all of that again. In addition to these videos that you're watching, if you need some extra help, if, if, you, if you want to have some extra help, some, some more material, you will find the original series of the videos on TES 5, which came out, which came out on 2012. There are a series of 80 videos, day 1 to 80, you can avail yourself to those as well. Today we are on page number 132. On 132 you will find some practice problem, we will work on those today. If at the end of the video you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, that you would like to hire me as your tutor, you can always get hold of me by sending me a simple email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, let's, let's get going. Number 1. Number one says, it has several parts to it. Part A says, convert, convert to percent. And part A is 3.35. And we're being asked to convert this quantity of 3.35 as a percent. Well, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. What does the word percent mean? Percent means out of 100. So if you have to convert something, a number, into a percent, we simply take it and we multiply it by 100. We simply multiply it by 100. And it's very easy to remember how to do it, how to convert a given number into percentage. Think of something that you already know. For example, we all know, for example, we all know that one quarter is 0.25. I hope you know that. And we also we all also know that it's equal to 25 percent. A quarter of something, a quarter of something is 25 percent. So the question is, if it's given in this form, how do we go to that form? It's very simple. You take the quantity, what is whatever whatever number is given to us, and you multiply it by 100. And when you do that, we pick up the decimal point and we move it two spots to right here, and it becomes 25. There we go. It becomes 25 percent. Same thing is going on here. We take our quantity, whatever it is that's given to us, and you multiply by 100. And when we do that, we'll find that we'll pick our decimal, we'll pick up our decimal place, and just move it two spots to the right. Pick it up and move it. One, two. It will end up right here. In other words, in other words, 3.35, 3.35 times 100 becomes 335%. 335 percent. One, one is 100 percent. If you have a one pizza, you have 100 percent of it. Obviously. Why is one equal to 100? How do we go from a number to a percentage? It's very simple. You take your number and you multiply it by 100 and when you do that, you have to remember to put a percentage sign next to it. So one expressed as a percentage is 100. If you have two of them, if you have two of them, that's 200%. If you have half, if you have half of something, which is only 0.5, which of course we know is 50%. Why is it 50%? Because we take this, we take this 0.5 and you multiply it by 100. And when we do that, 0.5, you pick up the decimal, you move it to spot 1 and 2, it becomes 50. You already know all of these things. Let's do the next one. My job here, my job here is to gauge a fine balance because I don't want to find out that I'm standing here and explain too much, too many tiny little things that you already know, because and hence annoying you. And I also don't want to find out that I rush over something that you may have trouble understanding. So I don't know. I'll, I'll see. Part B. Two point one five, and we're being asked to convert into 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 number. We already know what to do. When we're given an, 
when we were given a number uh, into percentage rather when we are being we are given a number and asked to convert it into the percentage you simply multiply it by 100 that's all it is so let's do that uh, simply multiply one more time 0.25 which is a quarter we already know this is one quarter if you have to convert this into percentage simply take it multiply it by 100 and when you do that 0.25 this becomes you move it to two spots it becomes there you go it becomes 25 percent 0 0.25 0 0.25 all of a sudden when you multiply by 100 it becomes 25 percent because you multiply by 100 same thing here we're going to multiply by 100 when you multiply by 100 we're simply going to pick up our decimal point and move it two spots one two right here it's going to end up right here in the middle of the two it becomes 21.5 percent it becomes 21.5 percent just do part c part c says convert into decimal this because it's different let's do it separately convert to decimal So here we are going in reverse order. Before we had some numbers and we are asked to convert it into percentage. So if you have a number, whether it is in decimal form or a whole number, 0.25 or 25, doesn't matter. You take that number and you multiply by 100 to convert it into percentage. Here we are given something in percentage and we are being asked to convert it into decimal. So it's the reverse. Instead of multiplying by 100, we are going to divide it by 100. And why are we going to divide this quantity by 100? Why are we going to divide this quantity by 100? The answer to that question lies in this symbol. This symbol is percent. What does it mean? What does the word percent literally mean? What's the literal definition of it? Percent simply means what it says. It means per 100 or out of 100. Out of 100. So 62.9% simply means, 62.9% simply means 62.9 out of 100. And now we're going to divide it. If we're dividing some number by decimal, we pick up our decimal, whatever the number is, or rather, when we're dividing something, some number by 100 is what I meant to say, we, we take our number, whatever it is, wherever the decimal is, we pick it up, and since we're dividing by 100, which has two zeros, we pick up our decimal and move it two spots, one and two. It's going to end up right here. And then we have to remember to put a z leaving zero in front of it. So this thing, 62.9 converted into decimal, becomes 0 0.629. Voila. Let's do the next one. D. 145%, 145%, 145%, same exact thing, percent means over 100, so 145 over 100. Now the question is, we write our 145 and we will pick our decimal place and move it two spots to the left. I don't see any bloody decimal, do you? I don't see any. But still, it is right here. The decimal is right here. It's not shown, but it's right here. When there is nothing after decimal, we don't write decimal, obviously. Right? Nobody's going to be silly enough to uh, say, when you ask them how much did you pay for this pizza, nobody's going to be silly enough to say, I paid 5.00000 dollar. It's just 5. But it's there. We we'll pick it up. We we'll pick it up. And move it two spots. 1, 2, voila, it becomes 1.45, 145% expressed as decimal becomes 1.45, there we go, let's go to the next one, part E says convert to fraction, convert to fraction, And what 
we have here is 0.265 and we are being asked to convert it into fraction let's see what we can do well if you want to convert it into fraction fraction means exact fraction means exactly what it says it means we have to have some number on the top a whole number and a number in the bottom right now what we have here what do we have on the top we have 0 0.265 on the top what do you have on the bottom no no answer is not nothing there is something in the bottom in the bottom is 1 right there even though it's not shown it's there but that's not a fraction the fraction means the top and the bottom they both have to be whole numbers they cannot be left in decimal form anything that appears in the decimal form either in the top or the bottom has to be taken care of so how do we convert point, point 0.265 into a whole number well it's very simple multiply it by a thousand why a thousand because we have one, two, three, three is parts of the decimal. Hence, we multiply it by one with three zeros. Now, we can't simply multiply top by 1000 and leave it at that. Whatever we do to the top, we must do the same, to the same thing to the bottom. In other words, we take this quantity, we take this quantity, which was, which was 0.265, and we multiply it by a thousand over a thousand. Oh, a thousand over a thousand is just one. So if you multiply something by 1, we haven't changed its value, it's still 0.265. We haven't done anything to it. We multiply it by 1, but 1 appears incognito. Very good. Let's do this, shall we? So question is how much is how much is 0.265 times a hundred or times a thousand rather? Well, since there are three zeros, since there are three zeros here, we can pick up our decimal and we're going to move it three spots to the right. Pick it up. One, two, three. There you go. By golly, now it becomes a whole number. It becomes 265. Decimal moves all of a sudden from here to the back of five and it just becomes 265. So that's what we have on the top. That's what we have on the top. Point, point 0.265 times a thousand is 265 and if it helps you to visualize it, if it helps you, you could actually put a 1 there if it makes it easier for you and 1 times 1000 at the bottom is just 1000 there you go and that's your answer, 265 265 divided by 1000 now sometimes, sometimes the answer will be when you look at the answer choices you will find something that looks exactly like that and sometimes they are presented in a reduced form. So the rule is that if the fraction can be reduced, it must be reduced. Do you find any any common do you find any common factor between 265 and 1000? And the answer is yes, they're both multiple of fives. They're both multiples of fives. What I'm gonna do now before we any, before we proceed, instead of writing my 1000 as 1000, I think I'm gonna write my 1000 as 100 times 10. 100 times 10 is still 1000, but it will make it easier for us to divide top and bottom by 5. Because I don't want to contend with 1000. I'm, I'm not a big boy. I can handle a 10. I don't want to deal with 1000. So let's divide top and bottom by 5. How many 5 does 2 have? 2 has no 5. 2 has no 5. Well, what does that poor 2 do? He, he, he can't take one of 5. He's too puny to take one of 5. So what does he do? Well, he goes to his next door neighbor knocks on his door and Mr. Six comes out and he says to Six, well listen I, I, I have a two that I want to deal with I can't deal with him on my own why don't you join with me why don't we gang up together and Six says why not two, and, two joins the Six and becomes a 26 and 26 can give five punches to five five fives are 25 five fives are 25 this is how we speak five fives are 25, that's the language. After we take away 25 from the 26, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 15. And 15 can give 3 punches to 5. Since we divide the top by 5, we must do the same thing to the bottom. How many 5s does 10 have? 10 has 2 5s. Right. 
You don't do all of them, you just have to do one. Which is why I broke the 1000 into 100 times 10, because it's much easier to divide 10 by 5 than to try to divide 1000 by 5. So on the bottom we'll end up with 200 times 2, or rather, on the bottom we'll end up with 100 times 2, which is 200, which is 200 on the bottom, 100 times 2, which is 200 at the bottom, and on the top we end up with 53. And now, it is in the reduced form, it cannot be reduced anymore. Let's look at F. What does F say? Well, we, unfortunately, we do have to contend with F. We cannot tell the bloody thing to F off. Do you understand? Let's, let's take care of it, shall we? So we have to convert this into fraction. How do we convert it into fraction? By making it a whole number. So it is 1.39 over 1. We want to convert this 1.39 into a whole number. There are two, two places after decimal. So we multiply the top by 100, which has two zeros. If you're going to multiply top by 100, we must do the same thing with the bottom. Voila. 1.39 times 100 will become 139. Because we pick up the decimal and move it two spots to the right, it becomes 139. And the bottom we have 100 times 1, which is just 100. So that one was simpler. Let's do the next one. The next one says convert to convert to decimal. The next two parts, G and H. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, I know you're not here for vocabulary, but if you're interested in improving your vocabulary, uh, go to YouTube or you are at YouTube, search Always type in my name, it makes it easier because otherwise a uh, thousand different people are going to pop up there because obviously I'm not the only one. Uh, just type in Keshwani and then type in T's vocabulary words day one. T's vocabulary words day one. There you will find a series of 100 videos where we learn vocabulary words to to uh, to a better command of the English language. It's a good thing I figured out how to finish the sentence because otherwise we would have had a hell of a time demonstrating any command of English language, let alone a better one. Let's look at answer choice G, or rather problem number G. It says convert to decimal. 26 divided by 10. Well, that's very easy. If you're dividing by 10, you just move it one spot. You pick up your number, you find the decimal, you locate the decimal, wherever the decimal is. I don't see any decimal, do you? Yes, there is a decimal. The decimal is right here. The decimal point is right here, right here. And since we are dividing it by 10, which only has one zero, you pick up the decimal, move it one spot, that's all. It becomes 2.6. That's all. Well, that was very easy. Let's look at H. H says convert to decimal again. 16 over 25. Well, that's a tricky one. That's a googly. And if you don't know what a googly is, well, then I can't help you. Because where I come from, we play something called cricket. And in cricket, sometimes one throws a googly. Not a curveball. We don't throw a curveball. In cricket, we throw a googly. This one is a googly. What do we do with it? Well, it's always, it's always easy to convert anything into decimal, any number into decimal. Listen carefully. It's always very easy to convert any number into decimal if it's given to you in a fraction form. If the bottom happens to be multiple of 10, if the bottom is 10 or 100 or 1000 or 10,000, it's very easy to convert that into decimal. All you have to do is move the decimal spots, whatever, however many numbers we need. If somehow we can convert this into a 100, because it's already more than 10, so we can't go to 10. So the next number after 10 comes 100, then 1,000, then 10,000. If we can somehow convert this into a 100, we are home free. How can we convert 25 into a 100? Aha! Why don't we multiply the bloody thing by 4? 25 times 4 is 100. But 
Kali. If you're going to multiply top by, if you're going to multiply bottom by four, we must do the same thing to the top. Sixteen times four is sixty-four. And how do I know sixteen times four is sixty-four? It's very easy. It's very easy. Sixteen times four, if you want to figure out. If you know what 15 times 4 is, and if you have to figure out 15 times 4, whenever, a, whenever somebody asks you to multiply something by 4, the trick is very easy. Take that number, double it, and double it again. So 15 times 4, if I have to do it, if you double the 15, we get 30, and if you double 30, we get 60. That's 15 times 4. If 15 4s are 30, if, if 15 if 4s 15 are 60 rather, if 15 fours are 60, then 16 four must be 64. It's just one more four. Or if you like, or you can like, you can do it now. 10 times four, 10 times four is 40. And six fours are 24. Voila, 64. Anyway, the top is 64. And 25 times four is 100. That was the whole point. And now we have 100 at the bottom. We can very easily convert into decimal. We can very easily convert into decimal. It's right here, so let's, let's, not, let's not rewrite it. Is 64. We want to divide it by 100. So we pick, take our decimal. We, we take our 64. Look at the decimal, which is right here. We pick up the decimal and move it two spots to the left. One, two. Voila! It's going to end up right here. So it turns out that 64, 64 divided by 100 equals equals 0, 0 0.64. So in other words, in other words, 16. 16 divided by 25, when written in a decimal form, it looks like this. It looks like this. That's it. We'll meet again tomorrow. I'm not going to continue because otherwise the video is going to be too long. We're going to meet again tomorrow obviously and we're going to take care of problem number 2, 3, 4 and 5. Those are quick, easy problems because they, they don't have parts to them. They're just simple problems by themselves. Instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all the way. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? If you want to get hold of me, you can always get hold of me very easily by sending me a simple email message at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright? I know.